ओके हेलो एवरी वन आई होप आई एम ऑडिबल गुड इवनिंग सुजीत गुड इवनिंग टू एवरीबडी हु इज हैज जॉइन मी हियर ओके सो टुडे वी वी आर गोइंग टू लुक इन टू अनदर सेट ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव क्वेश्चंस एम सी क्यूज फ्रॉम करंट अफेयर्स सेशन ओके वी आर डूइंग दिस क्लास एवरी डे एट फोर पी एम मोस्ट मैक्सीम वन अवर प्रोबब्ली लेस दैन दैट बट मैक्सीम वन अवर ट्वेंटी फाइव एम सी क्यूज रिगार्डिंग करंट अफेयर्स और राइट सो वन मोर थिंग आई हैव टू इनफॉर्म यू टूडे एट सिक्स पी एम आई हैव एन एंशंट इंडिया एम सी क्यू एच सोलविंग ओके एंशंट इंडिया एम सी क्यू सोलविंग एच अन अकाडमी डॉट कॉम स्लैश एच एम एस आर डब्ल्यू ओके अन अकाडमी डॉट कॉम स्लैश एच एम एस आर डब्ल्यू दैट इज माई अन अकाडमी वेबसाइट देयर आई हैव अ एंशंट इंडिया एम सी क्यू सोलविंग ओके वन फर्स्ट पार्ट इज ऑलरेडी ओवर यस्टडे दिस इज द सेकेंड वन ओके सो ऑल्सो आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू there are i will be taking classes on three important subjects revolt of 1857 okay revolt of 1857 then philosophical systems in india okay philosophical systems in india uh, and one more topic uh, regarding the uh, in, in medieval times okay that is disintegration of this integration of mughals okay all these would be taught on saturday august 22 uh, uh, in my website at anacademy anacademy.com/hmsrw in a prelims basis okay so if you uh, would like to attend it it is a free class just download the anacademy app and uh, you can watch it no need to pay money and all okay so yeah that's it welcome to, uh, let's start today's quiz i hope you will actively participate in this okay and let's see so before that let me tell you very briefly about an academy an academy is india's largest learning platform uh, we have daily live classes okay uh, where you can engage with your educator ask doubts and all that we have live tests and quizzes which makes you better comfortable at the examination scenario we have structured courses covering the entire syllabus of every examination all the competitive examinations we have unlimited access to videos resources and all that okay to get all this just download this an academy learning app from google play or uh, app store and make a free account register it and you can start learning okay so do that and this is about me i am madhav shankar arvaria i have conducted multiple sessions for the past 5 years i was i am a banker as i was a former banker as well okay uh this is how you can contact me through this whatsapp number uh or we have my telegram channel okay here i will be put, putting my notes or any updates and regarding my sessions and all so you can subscribe here you can ask your friends also to look into this okay uh and this is my an, an academy channel here i will take special sessions all the sessions that i told you at the beginning okay so yeah an academy gives you all these top educators from india you will be able to Uh, chat with them interact with them and learn okay so make the most of it this is a look into the upsc csc channel what all does this channel offer you polity governance history optional courses very important okay answer writing for mains and ncert summary so oh, everything is available here just uh, take a look at it so these are the various packages for a month 3 6 and 12 months so an academy has two subscriptions one is plus subscription other is iconic subscription so in plus subscription we have a one year package and a two year package one year package at 44000 rupees deducted to 39600 if you use my code msrw1 okay similarly 10% deduction for a 24 months course as well iconic course what does this offer you additionally to whatever i said iconic courses offer you a personal coach a guide or a mentor who will be there with you throughout your examination preparation okay he will give you uh, personalized feedback there will be daily main answer practice question answer practice study planner everything will be there for you on a one on one basis not a broadcast or a multicast okay so that again we have two plans uh, two years and one year 
so if you are preparing for 2021 take this one uh, 2022 or later take this one okay very very useful use my code msrw1 to get 10% discount here as well all right so that's about an academy and this is my channel okay an academy.com slash msrw please do look into this all my future classes uh, some of them uh, most of them will be in youtube and some of them will be will be there as well okay so you can uh, go here and click the follow button so that you will get notified whenever i schedule a class okay so that's it uh, let's start for today okay so the first question is on the board please see if you can answer this consider the following statements regarding official secrets act okay the law is applicable to government servants citizens uh, provides the framework for dealing with espionage sedition and other potential threats to the integrity of nation statement 2 the act was introduced in 1975 after the indo pak war to prevent all such actions that could help in the in any way the enemy states so which of these statements are correct okay so official secrets act what is this what does it, this act do actually this act what what it does is it prevents the government servants from revealing official secrets to other okay uh, uh, due to these espionage things and spy networks and all that the government had to impose such an act to make sure that no uh, privileged information is leaked into the public that is the reason official secrets act came okay when you study this act also make sure you study the right to information act okay rtio ai right to information act this is uh, this and these are have lots of contradictory points so make sure you study these two together and clearly understand what is it okay uh, so the correct answer to this question okay i am already getting some polls okay sanjay uh, thank you for participating uh, everybody i try to uh, if you know the answer or do not know the answer it's fine try to post an answer okay just go with your gut feeling and let's see how it goes correct answer is actually option a okay one only two is wrong why because this act has been introduced in 1923 not 1975 and not has nothing to do with indo, indo pak war uh, it has everything to do with british so this is a colonial era act okay in 1923 british government passed this act so you know that during the independence time india chose to follow certain acts and chose to stop certain acts so this one was continued okay so official secrets act is a colonial era act that is still being continued correct answer is option a question 2 with reference to lokpal very important lokpal who among the following comes under the ambit of the act so we know what the lokpal is right we remember all those uh, mass hartals that had happened during that time right uh, very famous the current uh, delhi chief minister was also part of all that and lokpal what it, what it does is it is an agency it's like a court or something like that which actually looks into atrocities or uh, looks into illegalities committed by certain higher officials of the government okay or uh, the government officials are accountable to uh, or can be brought into justice by through lokpal and the in this is in the center lokpal is in the central government and we have lokayukta in the state lokayukta this is in, this is the uh, corresponding of lokpal in the state level okay so which all which of these do come in the ambit of lokpal that is a question chairpersons and members board of directors uh, corporation society trust autonomous body established by act of parliament or wholly or partly funded by center that is uh, statement 1 statement 2 prime minister minister of uh, minister in union government member of parliament as well as officials of union government under group a b c and d any uh, society or trust or body that receives foreign contribution above 1 crore so which of these are correct that is the question so remember uh, the prime minister was brought under lokpal very late okay he was in there at uh, at the beginning but later the, uh, he was also brought in with certain conditions there are some conditions go uh, look through that 
okay for example a prime minister cannot be held accountable for any of his decisions regarding foreign policy national security uh, uh, nuclear power okay these these kinds of things so there are certain criteria like that so remember that anyway answer to this question is actually b very good shravan shravan degree has got it right actually it's correct is b okay uh, the all the people z in 1 and 2 are under this ambit am ambit of this act but here the amount is not 1 crore it is 10 lakhs so any society or trust or body that receives foreign contribution above 10 lakhs are under the ambit of lok uh, lokpal get it so correct answer is option b question 3 consider the following statements regarding the constitutional amendment acts so this is all current affairs plus polity okay whenever we study current affairs it always has to do something with something else either it is current affairs history or current affairs polity current affairs uh, international relation okay so here the question is about constitutional amendments okay uh, one thing i would like to tell you when you study about constitutional amendments make sure to study article 368 very very clearly article 368 what all comes under article 368 okay article 368 is regarding amending constitution so what are the procedures and what all can be amended so that all are here do look into it okay so first statement 44th amendment act of 1976 on recommend uh, was okay uh, 1976 wa was based on okay miss this based on recommendations of swaran singh committee and two 44th second amendment is known as a mini constitution is also known as mini constitution so can anybody tell me this is actually uh, your lakshmi from your lakshmi gand okay lakshmi gand textbook if, uh, if you have learned it you will know the answer okay i am i have get got some polls already so the correct answer is option b very good many of you have got it correct uh, so correct answer is option b 44 it is not 44 okay it is 42nd 42nd amendment act of 1976 in the uh, during the time of indira gandhi okay was based on swaran singh committee recommendation and the amendment uh, is known as a mini constitution why because there were lots of amendments in that and many amendments and 44th constitutional amendment act was passed to reverse some of the amendments made by 42 okay the 44th amendment passed by the janata party government later were, were implemented in order to reverse certain uh provisions of 42nd amendment also to add other some other provisions don't mix it okay question 4 which of the following is or are true regarding india russia relations okay for so first one akula class submarine christian das chakra 3 is the first russian nuclear powered submarine to be leased to indian navy uh statement 2 brahmos cruise missile program sukhoi su30 and rafale features in the india russia defense purchase select the correct statements be careful whenever you uh, write this attempt these kinds of questions in upsc make sure if they have asked for the correct statements sometimes they will ask for incorrect statements as well don't Uh, jump to answering okay read the question at least twice before you answer make sure there there is ample time to do that so make sure you read the question thoroughly at least two times before you go for answering so i am getting some answers here as well uh, guys can i uh, ask you something can you please uh, put the question number as well uh, along with your options because uh, right now i am seeing only options and i don't know what question it is okay so if possible please add the option num uh, question number okay so correct answer is they have asked for correct statements the correct answer is d none of the above both are incorrect okay why because chakra 3 is not the first russian nuclear powered submarine chakra 3 is the latest one okay chakra 1 is the first one we have chakra 1 chakra 2 and chakra 3 
okay and chakratri is the latest version uh, and here we have leased this particular submarine of akula class from russia for a period of 10 years okay uh, and the current uh, we have currently we use the chakra 2 that we have extended up till 9 uh, 2027 got it so that's it uh, so that is why the first statement is incorrect second statement can anybody tell me why second statement is incorrect look read carefully more carefully you jumped into the answer that's what happened brahmos when you saw brahmos you knew that it is russia but you didn't read the rest sukhoi is also russia here i have put placed rafael here see rafael has been in the news recently the salt aviation right which government was it rafael was from france we saw that video that Rafael's squadron coming into the Ambala air, uh, air station in India, right? Punjab's Ambala Air Force Station. We saw that uh, these uh, Rafael's were accompanied by Sukhoi uh, Mark 30s and it came to India very recently, the first batch. So, Rafael is from France, not Russia. Make sure to read the quest answer questions thoroughly. Okay, otherwise you could have got this correct. So, that is why second statement is wrong. Correct answer is option B. Question 5 is about organization of Islamic cooperation. Okay, why I have put this is OIC has been in the news recently, especially because this is an organization of Islamic uh, cooperation and Pakistan has always tried to use this group in order to put pressure on India. Okay, OIC. Uh, so that is why this is very important. But uh, very recently, last time, India was asked as a, India was invited by the OIC as a chief guest into their meeting. Okay, that is why this is very, very relevant. If you remember, our uh, previous foreign minister uh, had been the special invitee for that session. Okay, so, uh, the, uh, so the first statement is, it is the second largest intergovernmental organization after the United Nations. Its administrative headquarters is in United Arab Emirates. These are factual questions. Okay, these are factual questions in the sense, the first statement you can crack if you know the members, but that is very difficult. But second statement, the only way to answer it is if you, whether you know it or not. So when, if these kinds of questions comes in UPSC, if you are absolutely sure, you go for it. Otherwise, don't go for it. Okay, there are questions that you will know, there are questions that uh, you could work out and there are questions like this uh, which, which is very terrible because you will not be able to eliminate any of the, any of the options. Okay, if both these statements are factual. So, the correct answer to this question is A, okay, A only. It is the second largest intergovernmental organization after United Nations. So, United Nations has about 193, uh, somewhere around 193 countries and uh, OIC, I don't know the exact number, uh, but it is uh, like greater than 50, something like that, okay. Anyway, it is the second largest uh, intergovernmental organization. The head administrative headquarters is not in United Arab Emirates. It is at Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. Okay, you didn't need not study the exact number of members and all, not relevant, but uh, as, except for some particular groups of India, like say BRICS, okay, or the uh, SARC, these kinds of institutions you need to know. But this is, uh, India is not a member of OIC, so you have, you need not study the exact number and all, just understand that it is the second largest organization, okay. So that is why option A is only the correct answer. Sixth one, easy question. Okay, Sravan has uh, given me an additional information. There are 57 members. Okay, thank you, Sravan. OIC has 57 members. Okay. Okay, so question 6. The headquarters of International Court of Justice is located at? Very easy question. Can uh, You can start answering. I am waiting for your answer. I think all of you will get this one correct. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I am going to tell you the answer anyway. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Correct answer is option B. 
Hague. Okay. Uh, the correct exact place is Peace Palace. It is called Peace Palace at Hague in the country of Netherlands. Okay. Do not forget this. Netherlands, Peace Palace, Hague. A lot of organizations that you study are in Geneva. So make sure uh, to keep this in mind. Also, ICJ is the only organization that has its head, uh, headquarters outside New York in the UNESCO, uh, UN group. Okay, all other UN organs, United Nations organs have their headquarters in New York. This one has it Hague. Get it? The other court also, there is International Criminals Court, ICC. This is also has its headquarters in Hague. Okay, so both ICJ and ICC has headquarters in Hague. Question 7. Which of the following is the name of the tri-service military exercise between India and Russia? Okay, so uh, you need to, whenever you study for UPSC, make sure you study all the military exercises. Okay, make a list of it. That is available in many websites already. So download that and study the military exercises which on which India is a part. Okay. And reports. Very, very important. Military exercises, very important. Commissions and committees, important. Okay. Make sure you study all these things. So I have got 7. A is the correct answer. Very good. Many of you got this right. 7. A. Indira. Okay. Can I, okay. So what is Garuda? Can anybody tell me with whom India conducts the Garuda exercise? Garuda is a air force exercise, okay? Air force exercise between India and whom? Can anyone tell me? Garuda is an air force exercise between India and, yeah, very good. Naveen, very good. It is France. Malabar between? Malabar is a, again a tri-national exercise between India and two other partners. Who are? Malabar. USA. One more. One more country is there. Yeah, Naveen and Sujit got it correct. USA. But one more is there. Not Australia. Wrong. Simbex is not with US. That is also wrong. Correct answer is Japan. Okay. Yeah, that is correct. Sanjay Krishna got it correct. Japan. Uh, Deepika Gupta also got it correct. Japan, that is correct. Okay. So, remember, India, USA, Japan together forms the Malabar exercise. Also, Australia is a potential candidate for that. But India did not allow Australia to get into the Malabar exercise. Also, remember, these four countries, India, USA, Japan and Australia together forms the informal group known as the Quad. The Quad. Okay, this is kind of an anti-China, not anti-China, but it's against the Chinese influ domination in this place. Okay, remember that. Do not forget this. Simbax is between India and Singapore. Okay, Singapore. Simbax stands for Singapore India Maritime Bilateral Exercise. That is Simbax. Okay, so correct answer is option A, India. Next question. Triple billion targets are associated with which of the following bodies? <coughs> Triple billion targets are associated with which of the following bodies? Okay. Uh, yeah. Intelligent guesses. I am going to show tell you the answer now. The correct answer is World Health Organization. Yeah, Sanjay got it correct again. WHO. Okay. So, what is what is the triple billion target? Triple billion target means 1 billion benefits. 1 billion benefits for... Uh, sorry, 1 billion people gets health benefits. Uh, 1 billion people gets universal health coverage. Here, health benefits, health coverage. And 1 billion people will get protected from health emergencies. Okay. So health benefits for 1 billion people, universal health care for uh, 1 billion people and uh, emergency 
health protection for 1 billion people. These three together forms the triple billion targets. This is of World Health Organization. Okay. <coughs> so yeah, Sravan got it right. Very good. Question 9. Swift code is associated with which of the following sectors? So uh, this is very familiar thing actually. If you know the, uh, if you can relate to what this is. Okay, this is not, this is a very familiar thing to all of us. Whether it is automobile, telecom, banking, yeah, okay, very good. Everybody who answered it got it right. Sanjay and Sujit are on roll today. Come on, people, participate. Swift code is related with banking. Okay, correct answer is option C. So, what is Swift code? What does Swift stand for? It stands for Society of Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. Okay. Swift code stands for Society of Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. Fine. Okay. This is to transfer funds from one country to another. If you want to transfer from a fund from India to Australia, you need the Swift code. Okay, for international transactions, remember that. I have worked in a bank, so I uh, know how this thing works. Okay, so it is related to banking, don't forget. But people can ask that, see, it is telecommunication. So why cannot, why not telecom sector? Okay, UPSC always ask most accurate answer. Okay, if you look at UPSC options, there might be options that get you confused. You go for most accurate option. And here the most accurate is Banking, not telecom. Get it? Question 10. This is about, okay, again, again about banks here. Economy, white label ATMs. ATMs set up, owned and operated by non-bank entities are called white label ATMs. Cash in ATMs is provided by the sponsored bank while the ATM machine grants the bank in exchange. Which of the following are correct? Yeah, I have, but I have not cleared yet. Okay, I am also an aspirant. I am preparing now. So ten. Okay, and uh, Navini said uh, saying it is C. Okay, ten is not C. This is a uh, correct answer to this question is option A. Okay, why? Because this is correct. ATMs owned and operated by non-bank entities are called. Uh, ATMs, uh, white label ATMs. Cash in white label ATMs are provided by the sponsored bank, but there is no branding. Okay, no, the bank brands are not, there is no branding of banks by these white label ATMs. Then we have the brown label ATM. Brown label ATM means ATMs owned by banks. Okay, owned by bank, but operations and maintenance is done by a third party that is called brown label okay do not confuse these things white label atm very important rbi has what to do with this so correct answer is option a question 11 which of the following releases the data smart cities strategy i told you you have to compulsorily study all the reports reports uh, by various organizations Make a printout list of it. There is some 45 to 50 reports you have to study. Make sure you cover all of that. Okay. Data smart cities. Okay. I am getting polls. But the correct answer to this question is. Can I show it now? Or anybody else want to try? Okay. Yeah. I got the correct answer already. So I am going to show it. It is option B. Uh, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. So data smart cities means using the data, the uh, value of data collected from the city in order to take informed decisions. Okay, that is what data smart cities means. You collect as much as data possible from that city and use that data to make informed choices. Okay, uh, so I have put the CDAC and IT and everything to confuse you, but it is actually done by housing and urban affairs. Okay, it has not, it has more to do with the smart cities mission. You might have heard of that. 
स्मार्ट सिटीज मिशन ओके ट्वेल्व ओके सो वाट आर युअर सोर्सेस ऑफ कंड अफेयर्स फॉर कंड अफेयर्स आई यूज लॉट्स ऑफ सोर्सेस ओके फ्रॉम आई यूज सम अकेडमी मेटीरियल Uh, I use the uh, newspaper. I follow the Hindu newspaper. Okay, uh, that one I use. Sometimes in the express as well. Uh, PIB releases also. Okay, and for the government schemes part, I look for the look at the Government of India website. That is the most authentic source. So I go there. That's it. All right. Consider the following statements about India. What is India? India stands for India Indian Accounting System. okay indian accounting system that is called indias so the first statement is these are standards that have been harmonized with the globally accepted international financial reporting standards to make the reporting of indian companies more globally acceptable so earlier indian banks used to be within india only there uh, there has been been any big banks in india okay that uh, actually had international branches and all that but then now the situation has changed our banks are very compa- uh, you know compatible with uh, international banks so we are spreading out and in order to do that we should align ourselves with international standards of banking and that is why indias is in the news okay uh, and it advocates fair value method of accounting so uh, you need, need not know different method of uh, different methods of accounting that is beyond our syllabus so just understand that this kind particular method is used for uh indian accounting system correct answer is option c both the above okay correct answer is both the above uh, okay uh, fair value uh, method is there okay uh, actually that exist okay. question 13 which of the following statements describes mission shakti <coughs> okay statement a so what is mission shakti okay statement a offensive operation launched by indian navy on pakistan port city of karachi during the indo pakistani war of 1971 it is india's response to the potent case of future weaponization of space an operation of the indian armed forces to evacuate indian citizens and foreign nationals from yemen evacuation mission as part of covid 19 where flights via air india and its low cost arm um, air india express are employed which is the correct answer yeah uh, i have already got the correct answer so i am going to tell you the correct answer the correct answer is option b india's response to potent case of future weaponization of space you may have heard of this uh, recently india launched an anti satellite missile okay so in a very controlled environment india launched an anti satellite missile just to and it destroyed it okay it destroyed that uh, you know uh, fake satellite that india put there in order to test this one okay so this is the correct answer this is a india's response to potential uh, future weaponization of space can anybody tell me what the name of the first operation is uh, an offensive operation launched by the indian navy on pakistan port karachi in 1971 what is this operation called this is real operation okay i did not make this one uh, so what is this this operation is called operation trident okay this is operation trident don't forget indo pak war 1971 operation trident note make it okay it is trident uh, c op- uh, option c is an operation of indian armed forces to evacuate indian citizens and foreign nationals from yemen this was also conducted operation called operation rahat very very famous evacuation operation uh, evacuating indian citizens from yemen operation rahat and third this one everybody knows vande bharat okay some of you have already told me vande bharat yeah akash has told me vande bharat good one okay so remember all these operations okay akash is asking about uh, operation vanilla i am not familiar with that okay akash i will look and uh, tomorrow maybe tomorrow, or every day i have this quiz at 4 pm so i will refer and come back to you okay uh, i cannot recollect it at now but i will come back to you 
Question number 14. Consider the following statements regarding Bureau of Energy Efficiency, BEE. Okay, Bureau of Energy Efficiency. It is a statutory body under Ministry of Power. It is created under the provisions of Energy Conservation Act of 2001. Which of these are correct? Can you <coughs> please see if you can answer this? Okay, the correct answer is option C. Both are correct. Yeah, I knew you had, that you would make uh, get it wrong, the second one, but both are correct. Okay. Uh, it is created under the provisions of Energy Conservation Act 2001. So, what we know BEE because we have all heard of the star rating system. Okay. If you have seen it, we have fridges in our fridges or air conditioners uh, or the, you know, even now recently washing machines also. We have the star rating, 5 star, 6, uh, you know, 4 star, this kind of thing. This has been implemented by, uh, by the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Okay. Uh, it is it is looking into aspects where India's energy intensity can be reduced. India is a huge population, hugely banks on intensity of energy and Bureau of Energy Efficiency tries to put this, bring this down, this requirement down. Question number uh, 15, okay. Yeah, star label system, yeah, that's correct. Okay, question number 15. Consider the following statements regarding India Cooling Action Plan. India Cooling Action Plan. Okay, India is one of the first countries in the world to develop a comprehensive cooling action plan to fight ozone de uh, depletion adhering to Montreal Protocol. Ministry of Renewable Energy placed the India Cooling Action Plan. Which are the correct statements? We have 25 questions, alright? Every day, 4 p.m. Here, 25 questions. 15C, okay. Uh, let's see and correct answer. Remember, okay, just about India Cooling Action Plan. Uh, we have air conditioners at our home, right? Uh, individually, uh, each house has one. Uh, it's, it is put like that. But it is said that if we make this a centralized system, okay, uh, uh, it will be more energy efficient as well as uh, the greenhouse gases can be brought down, okay, the, and the uh, ozone depletion gases can be brought down. So that is the idea of India Cooling Action Plan. It is in consonance with Montreal Protocol, again dealing with ozone layer depletion. Okay, Montreal is a place in, can anybody tell me where Montreal is? Montreal is a place in which country? Montreal is a place in, any idea? It is a place in Canada, okay. So, uh, statement 1 is correct. Yeah, Naveen got correct. Okay, uh, statement 1 is correct. Statement 2 is wrong, okay. Not Ministry of Renewable Energy. It is by Ministry of uh, Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Okay, that's the new ministry. Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. This ministry uh, deals with uh, this coding action plan. So, statement B, uh, 2 is wrong. Correct answer A, 1 only. Get it? 16th question. We are into the last 10 now. Consider the following statements about International Energy Agency. Okay, many agencies today. I'm sorry, that's uh, but you have to study this and be important. Okay, uh, only OECD members states can become members of IEA. Okay, uh, India is not a member but has joined IEA as an association country. Associate country. Okay, not association. Associate country. To become a member of IEA, a country must have petroleum product reserves equivalent to 90 days of previous year's net imports, which are the correct statements. Any idea? So the correct answer to this question is, yeah, got very good Naveen, a correct answer is D or the above. Okay. Every statement is correct. Yeah, only OECD members can uh, join this. Study about OECD, okay? Look into the uh, its clauses, its members and all that. Uh, so, India is not a member but is an associate country. That is also correct. And you, you need to have a reserve of 90 days of previous year's net import. 
in order to join this group okay so just some additional question to you can anybody tell me how uh, we, india has currently three sorry three strategic oil reserves okay which are they can anybody tell me where all are they there are three strategic oil reserves in india at the moment operational we can anybody tell me where are these three located any of these three if you know at least one please uh, type it in the place okay not the name the place <coughs> strategic oil reserves means you no know, uh, these reserves are put underground okay there are huge containment oil containment areas underground in order to uh, you know uh, use it for crisis situations if if certain gulf countries stop giving oil to india india has to move on right so uh, some reserve is kept and that is strategic oil reserve and yeah shravan has got all correct it is visakhapatnam mangalore and padur okay visakhapatnam remember this write it down visakhapatnam mangalore and padur these are the three areas of strategic oil reserves in india three more are coming up okay not operational but coming up one is at rajkot gujarat okay another one at bikaner rajasthan okay and there is the third one any idea where the third one is you will have you will have to find this one out i am going not going to tell you rajkot bikaner and one more can anybody tell or in, no i will tell you i don't have to, okay it is called chandi gold okay can you see if i write it here yeah you can see it okay so it is chandi gold there are three of them rajkot bikaner and chandi gold rajkot in gujarat bikaner in rajasthan chandi gold in odisha these are the upcoming three reserves okay i am from kerala okay i am from kerala southern tip of india so moving on to question number 17 db shekhatkar committee very recently in the news deals with which of the following sectors db shekhatkar committee has been in the news very recently and it has been in the news for about past two years okay so very very important as well do look into the committee recommendations also okay so any idea which sector it deals with a banking b military three uh, sorry c telecom d education <coughs> yeah some of you got it correct navin got it correct i think yeah 17 is b okay shekhatkar committee recommendations are dealing with military not uh, telecom and education okay so uh, why this committee came into prominence because uh, we want it there is a something called ratio called tooth sorry tooth to tail ratio which means Num combat forces, combat units to administrative units ratio. Okay, so the uh, Shagatkar committee said that this should be improved and the combat readiness of the Indian uh, armed forces should be improved. And this committee looked into all that. Okay, do read on it uh, because it's still very relevant. And one more question uh, before uh, going on: Can anybody tell me? we have the recent nep national education policy of 2020 right which committee recommendations are is the basis of nep 2020 the committee set up in 2019 gave its recommendations and this one national education policy of 2020 has been implemented mostly as per the this committee recommendations what is the name of this committee can anybody tell me i will give you a, about 5 uh, seconds to answer nep 2020 has been implemented by yeah correct kasturi rangan k kasturi rangan committee okay based on k kasturi rangan committee remember that do not forget okay uh, one more question professor madhav gadgil committee okay uh, similarities between my name as well madhav gadgil committee what does this committee or which sector is this committee related to this is also very relevant because of certain things that has happened recently so 
Mathal Gadgil Committee. This is a bit old committee, okay. This is not, not a very new committee. But this committee has been in the news very recently because of certain things that happened very recently. So what does this committee deals with? Mathal Gadgil Committee. No, not telecom. Mathal Gadgil Committee deals with environment. Okay, or especially this environment sector, especially Western Guards. Western Guards. Okay, this is relevant because of the Kerala floods. Also, there has been a landslide in Kerala very recently, killing about 50 people. Okay, so uh, this, this committee has been in the news for a long time. Kerala had floods in the past three years as well. I am from Kerala, I know that. So, uh, very important committee regarding Western Guards, Madhav Gadgu Committee on Western Guards. Okay. Yeah, uh, floods has been there everywhere, okay, in Mumbai as well. So, we have looking into question number 18. Which of the, uh, which, which among the following is or are from the, sorry, is or are true about Polar Satellite Launch Vector, PSLV. You have heard of this, right? This is India's one of the most famous satellite launch vehicle. So, it is designed mainly to deliver earth observation and remote sensing satellites to sun synchronous or polar orbits. It is the first Indian launch vehicle to be equipped with liquid stages. So, we know that certain rockets have liquid stages and some have solid stages. And also, uh, certain has a mixture of these two uh, in alternate stages. Okay. So, uh, usually the lowest stage or the first stage will be solid because it gives a very higher com you know, combustion so that for that lift off and then goes to liquid state. So which, the, uh, which of these statements is or are correct? 18B, okay 18C, correct answer is 18C. Both these statements are correct. Okay, uh, it, it is sun synchronous orbit and it is the first one to use liquid stages. Also study about GSLV Mark III. Why? Because this is going to be used in Gaganyan. <coughs> okay, India's first manned mission into the space Gaganyan is planned in the near future. So study about this one, GSLV Mark III. Okay, next question. Question 19. Which among the following publishes Global Environment Outlook? Very simple question. Okay. But I have made the options pretty difficult. Okay. That is the thing. Question is simple, but options can be confusing. Options make the questions difficult. Okay. So, which is the correct answer? Yeah. Uh, correct answer? Yeah. This is a very easy question actually. Correct answer is United Nations Environment Program. UNE. Option A. I think everybody got this one correct. Okay. Uh, this, yeah, very good. I, everyone got it correct. Not even one mistake. UNEP is the correct answer. Do study about IUCN. I am telling you this because IUCN publishes the red list. And you have to study about two categories, especially uh, one is the endangered animals, and other one is the critically endangered animals. These two things you must try to buy heart. Okay. Other one, vulnerable, near threatened, and all that you can avoid because anything is that is not in these two is in the other categories. Okay. So do study that. Question 20. We are coming to the end of this quiz. Only about five more questions. So which of the following states recently started a census for otters? Okay. Otter. We know otters. Otters are animals, small animals that are highly poached and highly in danger because we can try to catch them for meat and all hunting purposes. Okay, so they, they are they are in the IUCN red list and they are categorized as near threatened animals. Okay, not necessarily but otters are classified as near threatened. So which state recently started census for otters? Correct answer is <laughs> I, I know why you said Kerala, but uh, correct answer is Uttar Pradesh. Okay, not my state. We, uh, the correct answer is UP. Correct A. 
all right you are uh, ucn status is near threatened okay near threatened <coughs> 21 consider the following statements regarding experimental advanced superconducting tokamak reactor or the east reactor very uh, important topic in the science and technology part okay it is a nuclear energy reactor project between india and russia targeted to meet india's renewable energy goals of 2022 okay uh, it is a fission reactor so we have we know about two kinds of reactor there are many reactors but uh, nuclear reactors em under employ two properties fission and fusion okay fusion means coming together fission divided so division of the uh, atomic nuclei causes fission reaction fusion causes uh, merging causes the fusion reaction correct answer is yeah uh, paramesh got it correct option d okay why because this is not between india and russia this is wrong this is not has nothing to do with india this has everything to do with china this project east reactor is also known as artificial sun you might have heard of this if i had put artificial sun then you will get this correct i know that that is why i did not put that name here okay so artificial sun they are trying to uh, build a sun in order to study the properties of the sun okay uh, but uh, and they have succeeded in it 100 million degrees celsius has been achieved through process of nuclear fusion okay is not fission fusion so <coughs> both the statements are incorrect get it next question 22 consider following statements about cloud seeding another question from your environment or science and technology first statement karnataka was the first indian state to experiment cloud seeding it is a weather modification process that aims to cause additional rainfall by dispersing substance chemicals into the clouds substance or chemicals okay uh, into the clouds which are the correct answer it is not go okay 22 answer is b that is correct answer is b only navin got it correct but uh, then it is not goa uh, it is not karnataka either it is tamil nadu tamil nadu is the first state to do this all right and it is a weather modification process by creating artificial rain and it is created using substances like uh, silver iodide okay silver iodide and dry ice okay so all these are scattered into the clouds so this will form the nucleus of the rain drop so the rain, uh, rain drop will form around it and then it will pour down so artificial rain is created using the cloud seeding technique okay so answer is b last three questions for the day world happiness report is released by who again make sure you study reports upsc always asks reports okay they are they love it they always ask at least one question from that and it is worth your time to study the reports because only there are very less number and easy to remember world happiness report is released by whom correct answer is yeah 23a okay sustainable development solutions network 23 a. uh another question let me ask you world sorry not world gross happiness index is associated with which country gross happiness index which country is this associated with i think everyone will know the answer can me can you please tell me gross happiness index we have the gross development index right uh, gdp or gnp all that gross happiness index is related with which country not usa very uh, i will give you a clue okay it is one of our neighbors not norway either it is a neighboring country to india gross happiness index i will give you some 5 seconds more to answer see if you can find it
okay correct answer is not nepal not singapore it is bhutan <coughs> okay so the correct answer is bhutan moving on to next question last but first question world's longest salt cave named malham is located in which country this has been in the news very recently okay in the newspaper it was there i don't remember exactly when but very recently malham is the world's longest salt cave that has recently been discovered around 10 kilometers okay and this is located in which country option a iran option b jordan c south africa d israel any idea correct answer to 24 question is option d is right okay so additional information world's longest cave okay now this one is salt cave so if simply if it is longest cave in the world it is the mammoth cave in usa okay simply if it is asking cave only it is mammoth cave in usa salt cave is in israel that is the malham cave okay moving on to question number 25 the last question for the day <coughs> okay last question consider the following statements regarding uvika uvika program it is a program launched by isro for chil school children also called young scientist program those who have finished the 9th standard and are currently studying in 10th standard will be eligible for the program this is the last question for the day can please try to answer this one 25th question consider the following statements uh yeah, no 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 one has got it right so far correct answer to this question is option a okay it is option a no one got it right uh because first statement is correct it is also called young scientist program and it has been implemented by indian space research organization for school children problem is that uh it is not currently not 9th standard and 10th standard it is actually 8th standard and 9th standard so who have finished 8th standard and who are currently studying in 10th and 9th standard are eligible for this program okay that's it we have come to the end of this question are you covering recent current affairs or the old one i am okay as far as upsc is concerned current affairs means anything that has happened in the last 3 years okay so i will be co covering everything uh, all these things so from 2018 to 20 uh, i will be covering okay that is the current affairs for upsc uh, for other competitive examination it is current affairs means last 3 months but upsc it's not like that uh, at least previous 2 years you have to cover it to get a concrete base okay so that's it uh which website can i refer along with the hindu paper for current affairs you can uh, web website you can use pib present uh, government website pib and when you study schemes you go for that particular government website whichever department is that ministry is that go there directly you can also uh, refer to the uh, if you are using mobile app and all you can use the air okay yojana or kurukshetra one of these magazines okay and hindu paper is hindu one newspaper is must i follow hindu along with these websites pib or the government ministry website okay uh, you can also go for some anaka uh, some notes as well some by academies an academy also provides various lessons so please do look into that all the things that i teach the pdf of that will be available to you for free in the telegram channel t.me/msrw1 it will be available there i will post it soon so do subscribe to this channel i will be updating my class timings and all in that channel okay so please do provide your feedbacks and all thank you for joining me today until tomorrow bye